really liked when American Idol came out. My mom, my mom watched it a lot. So like in turn, I watched, watched it too. Movie together, chat. I love you all. No, that was literally that was literally that was literally a movie we watched. The scandals that destroyed American Idol. I love, I love American Idol, man. What happened? Feel like Pharrell in 07 on my shoes, ice cream, make nice stars, stop them out, it's a man down. Maybe my low custom PC getting fanned out. Not from the block, I'm from the H and we don't play around. Catch him at a red light with a knife gun, we gon' spray him down. Yo, J So Fire, I appreciate you, man. I seen you. Uh Patrick CC, new post, new upload. If y'all don't if y'all are not subscribed to him, make sure y'all go to his channel and subscribe. Well, you know, this is my <laughs> this is my business channel so i'm not subscribed but look 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 boom i'm subscribed now okay boom there you happy man 20th 2009 the world realized american idol was rigged text gate yeah i'm not gonna lie i kind of realized that too like because a lot of it or a lot of it is like staged like some of it it feels staged it kind of feels the same way with uh, america's got talent too and what's the show with terry cruz is that america's got talent i don't know which one it is but a lot of the stuff feels like it's just not real was the name of the infamous voting scandal led by employees at AT&T who created power techs from demo phones that allowed individuals to vote for contestant Chris Allen up to 10,000 times. While Chris Allen was a very talented singer, it was obvious throughout the whole season that Adam Lambert, the runner-up, was crushing the competition. Not once throughout the entire season did the judges criticize his singing, mm. since it was near perfect. Some even suggest that his performance of Mad World is the best in American Idol history. But when Adam lost in the finale to Chris, it started to raise suspicion. But what was uncovered would lead to America- Wait, what? Yo, I'm Jacob with the- 15 get the subs i appreciate you just that his performance of mad world is the best in american idol history but when adam lost in the finale to chris it started to raise suspicion but what was uncovered would lead to american idol's demise viewership dropping by the millions and fans losing trust in the brand damn bruh and forever now you're probably thinking that the fans were just upset that their favorite singer didn't win the competition and that they are unreasonably outraged. True. And while some of that may be true, AT&T admitted that their employees did manipulate some votes, but they what? vehemently denied this had an impact on the final outcome. AT&T was one of the largest corporate sponsors and the communications partner for American Idol. They set up the voting gateway for fans to be able to send a text message to an abbreviated number, such as Idols 01, so the viewers determined who moved forward in the competition. They also had the ability to call an 866 phone number and vote online. However, the text-in voting was the most popular method since 2003. Every single year there were claims that the votes were unfair, such as in season 4 where three of the contestants had their numbers mixed up with the wrong numbers appearing on the screen, mm. resulting in millions of votes being voided. Or even earlier in season 8, where the number Idols 13 was owned by a company called Intimate Encounters, who used the number as a sex hotline. What? Imagine all those people accidentally texting a sex hotline. What? <laughs> but season 8 was the first time where there was an admission of foul play. Chris Allen was from Conway, Arkansas, and had the entire state rooting for him to win. During the night of the finale... No, yeah, yeah. Reality TV shows, like, if it's a reality TV show, they're always... Them shits always be scripted, bro. Them shits for sure always be scripted. Watch parties were and had the entire state rooting for him to win. Allen was from Clay. Chris Allen was from Conway, Arkansas, and had the entire state rooting for him Chris to win. Allen. During the night of the finale, watch parties were organized where up to 2,000 people attended. A few employees at AT&T got caught up in the enthusiasm of the competition and brought demo phones to the parties and provided texting tutorials to those who were interested. Basically, these employees taught people how to send power texts where each person could vote for Chris 10 times with the press of one button. However, one voter, Bobby Kierna, confessed to voting for Chris Allen 10,840 times in an AT&T texting zone that had been set up there. However, AT&T tried to reassure that this fraudulent activity did not impact the outcome because it was, quote, quite a leap to suggest that a few individuals could have impacted the final results. That's 10,000 votes, though. That's 10,000 additional votes from one guy, though. And the television network Fox was absolutely certain that the results of this competition are fair, accurate, and verified. 
This begs the question, how can you be certain the competition results are fair when AT&T admitted there was a manipulation in the votes? Despite Chris Allen winning, Adam Lambert would go on to have a much more successful music career, as he has now earned the honor of replacing Freddie Mercury as the new frontman of Queen, the fifth highest selling band of all time. Oh, but we shit. probably should have seen Textgate coming because a few years earlier the votes were manipulated to purposely get a bad singer further along in the competition. But before we get into the next scandal, allow me to introduce Scentbird, who were generous enough to w sponsor ad, this video. Scentbird is your one-stop shop to discover, explore, and learn about scents. <laughs> person to expect. <laughs> he labels like scent, <laughs> and that's why I got Burberry Brit. It smells great, Burberry. subtle, but a little sweet. What? It reminds me of vanilla. Let me show you how the case works. Okay. You just twist the top to the unlocked position, and you're ready to get <laughs> loaded up right now. It's just a little over seven dollars for Jaya Malakar. One of the most what? sponsoring this video, check out the links below. This is Sanjaya Malakar, one of the most controversial American Idol contestants in history. Sanjaya was a 17-year-old kid from Seattle Damn, that this quality. personality and a decent voice. No, I can't blame you, but I just keep trying. Basic. Most of you might be thinking his singing isn't that bad, and it really isn't, especially compared to the industry standard today. But for American Idol, a show dedicated to discovering the best talent the country has to offer, people thought he didn't even come close. And the fact that he made it all the way to the top seven finalists indicated that there was something suspicious going on. A website called Vote for the Worst was created in the early 2000s and gained a lot of popularity during season three of American Idol. What? It was essentially a blog or forum That's dedicated so to mobilizing up. Idol fans to vote for the worst person every week, with the ultimate goal of the winner being a mediocre or bad singer. Their first target was Antonella Barba. They went as far as leaking racy photos of her to bring traffic to the site. A low blow for sure. However, she ended up getting voted off, so their troll campaign was no longer successful. Mm. And in 2019, she got sentenced to 45 months in federal prison for possessing 400 grams of fentanyl with the intent to distribute it. She even tried to reduce her sentence in court Damn. with the argument that being voted off American Idol was the reason she spiraled out of control. What? Anyways, after being unsuccessful with Antonella, Sanjaya became Don't blame America favorite, Idol for your or I guess addictions. the least favorite, because he was often the person they were voting for as the worst. Simon Cowell was notoriously not a fan of Sanjaya. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. If I started to notice that, like, if I noticed this and that they were intentionally, like, boosting the worst peoples, I was just too bad. I was just, like, literally do my worst. Jaya. But the general American public thought he was sweet and lovable. They even made iconic Easy. memes about Sanjaya. Sanjaya, you're the one I admire. Who cares if Simon likes ya? The controversy around him turned his supporters into diehard fans and turned his ops into massive haters. Make sure you're drinking water. Howard Stern even um, praised the vote for the worst website, alone? which brought it to much bigger heights. Shock jock Howard Stern is plugging a website called VoteForTheWorst.com, hyping Sanjaya as a way of discrediting American Idol. The site was getting around four to five million viewers each week, Damn. earning them some mainstream coverage. Has a website, and uh, they're they're voting for the worst contestant on American Is that Idol. How they're doing? That's right. Now there is no concrete proof that this website was manipulating votes, mm. but the massive amount of traffic the site was getting each week could suggest that they had some influence. Even the creator of the website, Dave Della Terza, was interviewed on national news. Uh, I don't know that we're trying to rig the process, but what we're trying to do is say, you know, this isn't a legitimate talent competition. They're trying to make good reality TV, so why don't we try to keep around someone that's bad and try to keep them around, help them win, because it'll make the show uh, better to watch. Now Dave raises the age-old question. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Do your votes matter? The only evidence people use is when a contestant seems Hell, to be popular. What happened to Howard Stern? internet and in the still news, be doing shit. but then gets voted off or when a contestant is generally disliked but advances which obviously isn't a strong argument six nine has nine million monthly listeners on spotify mm -hmm. but everyone hates him clearly not everyone hates him because a lot of people are still listening to his music bro it's kind of the same when people post something like on instagram or like if you look under a post uh somebody will put Somebody will post a person on Instagram and then the comments are like, yo, stop posting this dude. Yo, I'm sick of seeing this dude. Da, da, da. It's like, if you really didn't care, you just like scroll past it. Like you wouldn't give it any attention. You're adding extra steps to you to show that you care by scrolling and seeing it and be like, oh my God, going to the comments and then typing the comment and then sending the comment. You kind of, you kind of seem pressed. I'm not gonna lie. You kind of seem pressed. If I see some shit that is annoying that I'm so sick of seeing, I'll see it and be like, oh my God. And then just... This move, this, this move right here, boom. Just hit this move, boom, just like that. Boom, 
Easy. I hate when people say they don't care. Or like, I don't like seeing this person when you can literally just scroll past it. You are actively commenting on it, feeding it to your algorithm. So you see them more. I don't think people understand how algorithm works. If you are active on something, it will, you will keep getting fed it because you are active on it. You are showing engagement. It can't, it can't process what you type in. It just knows that you type in. So, wow, you must like this thing since you talking about it, my guy. Like, what the fuck? My point is that the general public perception- Like, chat. Like, I don't like spiders, bro. I don't ever see spiders in my recommended. I don't ever see spiders on none of my shit. Because if I see something of a spider, I don't be in the comments like, yo, my God, I fucking hate spiders. Stop. Po I hate when people post this. Because then they'll just give me more spiders to look at, bro. Like, I just stay, I just keep scrolling. ...has little to do with the actual American Idol voting data. Hey, especially oh, when they don't... I he was about to kiss him. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem. I, just, I wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yo, chat, what if I... <laughs> If I never looked at y'all, what if I was just always looking up? If I was a little like always looking up, yo chat, yo chat. Clearly, not everyone hates him because a lot of people are still listening to his music. My point is that the general public perception has little to do with the actual American Idol voting data, especially when they don't even show what the real data is. There is no live tracker. There is no formal voting report that is released. You just have to trust that they are doing the right thing. And the person with the least votes is the one who gets eliminated. Plus you have to consider that plenty of the artists that lost would go on to be wildly successful. Chris Daughtry finished fourth in 2006 and would go on to sell 20. Wait, he was on American Idol? Be wildly successful. Chris Daughtry finished fourth in 2006 and would go on to sell 20. What? I really like his music too. I didn't know he was, I didn't know he was on American Idol. He's good as hell. One million records. Tori Kelly didn't even make it past the second round and went four times platinum later. Lauren Elena was runner up in 2011 and went 11 times platinum. In fact, out of the top 10 most successful American Idol contestants, six of them didn't even win the competition. However, there's another- Oh, what? Wait, wait, hold on. Say, feed that to me in again. 2011 and went 11 times platinum. In fact, out of the top 10 most successful American Idol contestants, six of them didn't even win the competition. However, there's another way to analyze this that may prove the votes are actually choosing the winner, but the people voting might be the problem. The WGWG controversy stands for White Guy with Guitar. From 2007 to 2012, the winner of American Idol was a white guy with a basic white guy image who loved to play the guitar. A darker theory suggests the show is racist and is promoting an agenda, but the viewership was declining by the millions year after year. Hmm. I don't want to be that guy that believes in the WGWG, but I'm I'm just saying, there is a trend, bro. There is a trend of a white guy with a guitar, and everybody falls in love. What is it? What is it, man? Might it might be because the viewer base? It might just be because the viewer base, though. Uh, maybe it's just like more like people who like that type of stuff are watching it i don't think there's like probably just like a whole bunch of people who like hip-hop sitting around watching american idol and texting to vote on their phone i think that's probably what it uh is a big part of it a year during the wgwg also not trying to take no one's talent away too like they probably talented as well but you know i feel like more more white people were probably watching American Idol and voting. Era. It doesn't seem likely that the producers and investors would keep the agenda going if it was hurting the show's reach, especially considering that the first six winners of American Idol- Ruben Stutter, right? Oh my God, wait, her too. What was her name again? Uh. Or unpredictable. Fantasia, Fantasia diverse and led to the show growing in viewership every year season seven was the first wgw damn wait the first six seasons was these were bangers these were wait these were banger banger artists that the producers and investors would keep the agenda going if it was hurting the show's reach especially considering that the first six winners of american idol were unpredictable diverse oh, wow. and led to the show growing in viewership every like these year. were good ass season picks seven too was the first wgwg winner which was the first time they ever saw viewership decline and it steadily kept dropping from there 
Ken Warwick, producer of the show, explain the reasoning. It's no secret that most reality shows are female driven, either by moms or by young girls. Mm -hmm. It does mean we're going to get a heftier amount of female votes. Obviously, we are very much aware that the voting can be skewed towards the boys. But it's not just because of their gender, but their personality and potentially their looks. You have this alliance between young girls and grandmas, and they see it not necessarily as a contest to create a pop star competing on the contemporary radio, but as who's the nicest guy in a popularity contest. Exactly. In short, the winners are disproportionate. That's why everybody has like these fucking backstories that they always give out at the beginning of the of their shit. Fortunately chosen by suburban moms and young girls because they like the show the most. The predictability of the winner may have led to a huge average viewership drop from 25 million in season 10 to 18 million in season 11. Mm. But after the five year WGWG streak, Candace Glover would go on to win season 12 of American Idol. However, the viewership dropped again from that 18 million average to 15 million and it just kept going down. Damn. Keep in mind, this was also in 2013, where the social media takeover mm. was about to destroy TV ratings Yeah, nobody, entirely. nobody was watching it's that likely no that the voting process falls somewhere in the middle. Millions of people choose who they want, the show producers use the votes to determine who the most popular singers are, advance those people at the top, then eliminate one from the bottom few based on what will make for the most entertaining outcome. All voting shows like American Idol, The X Factor, The Voice, So You Think You Can the Dance, Voice. usually have the same overarching issue. It's not necessarily about talent, but producing the most entertaining show. However, this is about as close to the real world as it gets. How often do the most talented people become the most successful? The most talented singers, actors, hell, even government officials are not always the ones who become the most successful. Talent is definitely important. But branding, relatability, and overall entertainment value is what people are drawn to the most. The chances of American Idol being just another scripted reality TV show where the votes don't count and producers pick the winner are very high. And maybe the decline in viewership was simply <laughs> due to the death of TV and birth of social media. Yep. In the end, the viewers get to discover their new favorite singer. Winning the competition does get you an immediate prize, but the platform and exposure is the most valuable part. And what you do with mm. that exposure is on you. That kind of makes sense why it's like the people who like the ones who didn't even win become like the most successful and i think it's because let's like fresh off the show like right from the show of them getting eliminated they're automatically doing their own shit like they're all already on their own thing okay appreciate it chat thank you thank you thank you 